Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will go through assembling a power supply kit. I'll show you how to solder the components onto the printed circuit board, and at the end, we'll test the completed circuit together. If you're interested in the world of electronics, join me. Soldering process, starting steps, identifying the components. First, let's check the components included in the kit, such as resistors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors. It's crucial to place everything in the correct position, so follow the circuit diagram carefully. Soldering the resistors. The first components to solder are the resistors. Identify them based on their markings and place them in the designated spots on the PCB. After inserting them, Slightly bend their leads to keep them in place, then start soldering. Touch the soldering iron to both the lead and the solder pad simultaneously, then add solder. Aim for a clean, shiny joint without bubbles or cracks. Soldering the diodes and checking their polarity. Next, we'll solder the diodes. It's very important to pay attention to their polarity. The stripe on the diode body helps with identification. Based on the markings on the PCB, make sure to insert them correctly. Soldering the capacitors. Capacitors must also be inserted with the correct polarity, especially electrolytic capacitors. The longer lead indicates the positive terminal. Once in place, proceed as with the previous components. Solder, then trim the excess leads. Placing transistors and ICs. When soldering transistors and ICs, ensure proper orientation. For ICs, locate the marking that indicates pin one. While soldering ICs, be cautious not to overheat the component. Soldering connectors and output terminals. Finally, we'll solder the larger connectors and output terminals. These require a bit more solder, but the technique remains the same. Create a clean, strong bond. Testing process. Now that we've completed the soldering, it's time to test the power supply. For this, I'll use a bench power supply and a multimeter. The goal is to ensure the circuit functions correctly and that we can adjust the output voltage within the designed range. Preparations. First, I'll connect the bench power supply to the circuit's input connector. I'll supply power between 8 and 24 volts, which is the designed operating range for the kit. Make sure the polarity is correct Connect the positive lead to the appropriate input terminal and the negative lead to the negative terminal. Connecting the multimeter. I'll connect the multimeter to the output terminals to measure the voltage provided by the power supply. Set the multimeter to measure direct current DC voltage and ensure the measurement range is appropriate, such as 30 volts. Adjusting the input voltage. Next, I'll set an initial input voltage, such as 12 volts, on the bench power supply and check the circuit's response. The power supply will also display the input current consumption. If it's unusually high, it might indicate an issue, such as a short circuit. Regulating the output voltage. Now, I'll adjust the potentiometer built into the circuit to regulate the output voltage. I'll closely monitor the values on the multimeter as I slowly turn the potentiometer. The aim is to confirm that the output voltage adjusts smoothly between the lower limit, e.g. 3 volts, and the upper limit, 24 volts. If the voltage fluctuates or fails to reach the desired values, it may indicate a problem that needs further investigation. Checking stability. Once the output voltage is successfully regulated, let the circuit run for a few minutes to ensure its stability. During this time, check whether any components, such as transistors or ICs, are overheating. Troubleshooting tips. If any irregularities occur during the test, such as no output voltage or excessive current consumption, consider rechecking. The quality of the solder joints, look for cold joints. The polarity and type of the components, whether there are any shorts on the printed circuit board, finalizing after testing. Once all tests are completed successfully, 
The power supply is ready for practical use. It demonstrates proper functionality over a wide range of input voltages, and the output voltage is precisely adjustable. Now you have a stable power supply that can be used for various projects. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions about the process. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do so via the link in the description. Good luck with your build and see you in the next video.